Good evening, Sarawak. It's 8 p.m. Saturday, September 26. This is Didi Weekly. It's good to be with you. I'm Karen Bong. We are here to bring you a recap of the top news stories that met headlines across Sarawak for the week. Sarawak lost three prominent figures in the past week. Sarawak Ivan war hero Dato Awang Raweng, who was the only Malaysian ever awarded the George Cross Medal for Outstanding Gallantry by the Queen of England in 1951, passed away at a ripe old age of 104 on September 18 at his residence in Sri Aman. He was led to rest at the hero's grave on Monday after a state funeral in Kuching Civic Centre a day earlier. Among the state dignitaries who paid their last respects were Chief Minister Datuk Patinggi Abang Johari Tun Oping, Deputy Chief Ministers Datuk Ama Douglas Uga Embas and Tan Sri Dr. James Jemut Masing, State Secretary Datuk Ama Jao Samion and many other state cabinet ministers. British High Commission Group New Defence Advisor Captain Simon Hindmarsh also came all the way to Kuching to pay his final respect on behalf of the British government. Yang Dipertuan Agong Al Sultan Abdullah Riyatuddin Al Mustafa Bila Shah and Raja Permaisuri Agong Tunku Haja Aziza Amina Maimuna Iskandaria have also expressed their condolences to Awang's family members. Former Tarat and Kaduk Assemblyman Datuk Frederick Bayoy Mangi passed away on September 21st at the age of 77. He was a member of Pati Pasaka Bumiputra Basatu PBB for 34 years before resigning in January 2016. Syrian Member of Parliament Datuk Sri Richard Riyad Jaim who was among the state dignitaries to pay their last respect, described Bayo as a kind person and his demise was a great loss to the constituency he had served for five terms. And on September 23rd, the first Iban colonel, Dangston Nyaring Anking, passed away at his residence in Batukawa, also at the age of 77. Dungston, who served in the 1st Ranger Regiment during the Indonesian confrontation and assigned to receive the Battle Trachan on behalf of his battalion, was the first native Iban officer to attain the rank of full colonel in the Malaysian Army. On education, Sarawak first of five state-owned international school, Yayasan Sarawak International Secondary School is expected to be operational by 2023 and will be using the Cambridge International General Certificate of Secondary Certificate Syllabus. Building works for the school sited on a 29 acres land at Mount Tua, Jalan Kuching, Syrian, will commence in June 2021 and is expected to be completed within 18 months by end of 2022. Chief Minister Datuk Patinggi Abang Johari Tun Openg, who performed the groundbreaking ceremony for the first school on September 22, emphasised that underprivileged potential students will study free in the school as the Gabongan Party Sarawak GPS government will pay for their fees. He said this will give opportunity especially to rural children from low-income families to receive quality education in a competitive environment. Meanwhile, Minister of Education, Science and Technological Research Dato Sri Michael Mangin Jawong said that the government also planned to begin construction of the schools in Cebu and Bintulu by early 2022 and in Miri and Second School in Kuching by mid-2022. He hopes that by the end of the 12th Malaysia Plan in 2025, all the five international schools will be in operation. Regarding the concerns over the shortage of teachers, Mangin assured that Sarawak will have enough qualified, well-trained teachers with extensive experience to teach in the schools as he welcomed retired teachers or those thinking of early retirement to return to the classroom. Moving on to politics, Chief Minister Datuk Patinggi Abang Johari Tun Openg is keeping the cards close to his chest on candidates for the Bidayu seats in the coming state election due 
by July next year. Noting that Opa constituency, which is one of the eight Bidayu majority seats won by Barisan National, which later rebranded to GPS, is now in a different camp under Pati Sarawak Persatu PSB after its assemblyman Datuk Ranu Mina rejoined the party, Abang Johari stressed that GPS will fight them and get the seat back. Apart from Opa, other Bidayu majority seats are Taset Biru, Serumbu, Mambong, Tarat, Bukit Semuja, Geduk, and Tebedu. Out of these seats, six are under Pati Pusaka Bumi Putra Busatu PBB, except for Taset Biru, which is under Progressive Democratic Party PDP. Bidayu community's most senior politician, Mangin, has expressed confidence that the community would continue to support the GPS government as it had brought about development to the Bidayu areas. Surian MP, Datuk Sri Richard Riyot Jaim, who also shares Mangin's sentiment, however cautioned to never be overconfident and underestimate the opposition. He believed that GPS can win provided that they work extra hard. Coming up next is more updates on Sarawak social and development news. Briefly on national development, Prime Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin had on September 23rd announced that the federal government will allocate an additional 7 billion ringgit in cash aid under Bantuan Prihati Nasional BPN 2.0. He emphasised that the cash aid will be channeled directly to 10.6 million recipients who have been approved under BPN before this. He added that 1,000 ringgit each would be given to 3.7 million families in the B40 category, 500 ringgit each to 1.8 million singles in the B40 group, and 600 ringgit each to 1.4 million M40 families, and 300 each to 1.7 million singles in the M40 group. The payments would be made in two batches, with the first at the end of October, this year and second in January next year. Zooming into Miri, a special task force will be set up to look into and identify abandoned oil wells in the city following the discovery of liquefied oil at Canada Hill on September 14. Minister of Transport Datok Lee Kim Shin said the task force comprising Petros, Miri Residence Office, Sarawak Shell Bahar and Petronas will also check for any possible leaking from the abandoned oil wells, especially below Canada Hill, Kampong Haji Wahid and Kampong Lereng Bukit. Meanwhile, Singapore's third largest supermarket chain, Sheng Xiong's Group, has put in order for 11.5 tons of tilapia and button fish from Sarawak. Thrilled with the new order, Borneo Ecofish Managing Director Thomas He said this indicated that Sarawak fish products have great potential to grow its market space in new territories internationally. Sarawak Trade and Tourism Office Singapore Status, Chief Executive Officer Chiu Chang Guan thus urged Sarawakians to explore opportunities to export to Singapore and to capitalise on expanding their existing pools of trade, investment, knowledge and networks. Latest on crime and accidents. A seven-year-old boy reported missing after he fell into the river was found dead by fishermen at Kampong Suai near Daro in Muka on September 19. His body was found four kilometres away from where he went missing. And on September 22, a 14-year-old teenager was suspected to have drowned before he was found dead in a river at Kampong Segeduk in Batukawa, Kuching. The boy was reported to have been bathing in the river before going missing. 
Bomba activated a search and rescue operation and the deceased was found approximately 14 feet away from the scene where he was reported missing. Now let's take a quick look at COVID-19 in Sarawak. There were one local case in Kuching and one imported case in Bintulu reported in the past week. With one new locally transmitted case, the status of Kuching has thus been reverted to yellow zone. The cumulative number of positive cases now stands at 703 as of September 25th. There is only one active cluster left, which is the Alam cluster in Bintulu, but all eight cases have recovered and have been discharged from the hospitals. Three patients are still being treated in hospital, with one each in Sungai Buloh Hospital, Selangor, Sarawak General Hospital and Bintulu Hospital. Meanwhile, State Disaster Management Committee has also tightened the Standard Operating Procedure SOP for entry into Sarawak. All Sarawakians, permanent residents and Sarawak visa pass holders entering Sarawak from or through Sabah and Labuan are required to observe home quarantine for 14 days and wear the wristband. They will also undergo tests for COVID-19 twice on the second and tenth day. All Malaysian citizens as well as foreigners who want to enter Sarawak through Sabah and Labuan must first obtain permission by applying through Enter Sarawak application. Peninsula Malaysia, Sabah and Labuan as well as foreign visitors are also required to attach a copy of their COVID-19 test results which must be valid for three days before they can be approved to enter Sarawak. They will be given a special five days pass in Sarawak and a copy of their return air tickets must be attached with the application. That's the DD Weekly News for this week. Thank you for watching. I'm Karen Bong. Have a great weekend.